I first heard about uh, Dr. T. Actually, I bought his book, The East Syndrome, about 10 years ago. And um, I read it. it. The symptoms I could identify with, uh, but it was two years ago that I ran into a friend of mine, and I said, who's your doctor? And I live in Beaumont, so I drive 90 minutes to see Dr. Trowbridge. And uh, two years ago, I asked my friend, who is your doctor? And he said, um, Dr. Trowbridge, that he had bought the book, The Yeast Syndrome, and he could relate to a lot of those symptoms. So I said, well, you know, I think I have that book. I went home, and sure enough, I found it and had a bunch of underlines, a lot of notations in the columns. And I just didn't realize that Dr. Trowbridge was really that close. I thought he was far, far away. But 90 minutes is, uh, is a little bit of a drive, but I think it's worth it. Um, my couple of reasons that I came in originally, well, actually three things. One is I have um, been, I, when I was two years old, I was diagnosed with uh, hearing loss. And uh, it's a mystery. Nobody knows what happened. But and I've compensated for that. Now, today, uh, in the last few years, I've had some vertigo issues, and that comes along with the territory. Vertigo can call, be caused by a lot of different reasons, but in my case, it pertains to my ears. Um, anyway, so to keep from my hearing to get worse, I come to Dr. Trowbridge to do proactive measures just to keep it from getting worse. Um, another thing I came for in the beginning was I was starting with uh, pre-menopause issues, some woman stuff. And so he is apparently really, really good with hormone uh, treatment. Um, and then the other thing that I came for was my mother died of Alzheimer's at the age of 66. So I'm 53 and I want to be sure that I'm doing everything I can do to keep from getting Alzheimer's. I have a sister, my oldest sister, and she seems to be acting kind of funny. You know, she's got some, some memory issues, some goofiness, some, and we kind of look at each other. Does she have Alzheimer's? We don't know. And um, I took the uh, heavy metal provocation test. Something interesting came up other than the usual lead and mercury, but one thing was tungsten came up as high on my list. and. I read the paragraph that's provided with the report, and I believe the reason I got that is because when I was young, uh, ages 8 to 14, my parents owned a welding shop, and this tungsten can be a result of maybe breathing or being involved with welding, and I was around the shop a lot, and we'd go I would hang out after school. Um, so I thought that was interesting. And Dr. Trowbridge says that tungsten is not directly removed by use of chelation, but it can be removed indirectly. Um, OK, so and then and on top of all that, I've had allergy issues. And I've been treated for the yeast syndrome, which is candida albicans. I've changed my diet. A uh, long time ago, I would have um, eczema issues where dry skin around my nose and my, uh, around my uh, eye right here, and maybe some in my ears, some dry skin. And the uh, traditional doctor would give me a prescription ointment. It would go away quickly, but then it would come back. Use the ointment, it'd go away, but then it'd come back. So that's what I like about Dr. Trowbridge. He's a holistic doctor, alternative medicine. He goes after the cause of the problem and doesn't just put a Band-Aid on it. So changing my diet is what fixed that. Um, now uh, I've had several uh, chelation treatments and my lead and mercury is coming down. My allergies are 90% better. Um, I still have a little bit of allergy. Uh, I still struggle with hormone issues. I'm in menopause right now. I still have uh, some hot flashes at night, and we're working on that. That's an ongoing issue. But the main thing is, is I come for Dr. Trowbridge for preventative. I'd love to tell you a story like the ones you've heard earlier where people have had tremendous success 
with some terrible problems. But on the other hand, I'm glad I don't have that story. You know, I'm glad to be able to tell you I'm here for pro, uh, preventative medicine. Um, let's see what else. Oh, Dr. Trowbridge is the first doctor that I've ever had that will answer all my questions. And I believe I might win the prize for asking the most questions. <laughs> And believe it or not, he even answers my questions through email. So how many of you have a doctor that has done that? Oh, and I just believe that Dr. Trowbridge really does his work uh, as a labor of love. And one time in his, in his office, he told me, he says, his job is to work himself out of a job. Thank you. I have been chelating now for about in October, it will be seven years. And I am so much with Barbara and what you said. She said, I'm here because I don't want to have that stroke, that heart attack, that, that whatever that is gonna put you over the edge and just ruin your health. I, I got here really because of my son. My son had told me, Mom, one of these days, you're going to need chelation. And I had no clue what it was. No clue. And he had gotten on the Internet, and he had found this, and he said, Mom, you have got to do this. It will keep you away from all these bad things that I don't want you to have. And so he told my brother, too. My brother was seven years older than me. And he told my brother, and he got my brother involved in chelation, actually, before I got involved in it. So my brother had about a year or 18 months head start on me. And so he was going to chelation, and then when I started, I was up in the hill country, and I had to drive an hour to get to chelation, but didn't mind one bit. And um, I started, and, and my brother, about the same time I started, my brother was sort of tapering off. And so I would call him every time I was at chelation, and I would say, what are, I'm chelating. What are you doing good for yourself? <laughs> you know, what are you doing to make you live longer? And um, he did pretty well for a while. But then one Saturday, he called me, and um, my brother never calls me on Saturday, never. I knew the moment I heard his voice, something was bad wrong. And he said, Helen, he said, I just wanted you to know that I am going into the hospital, and Wednesday I'm going to have open heart surgery. Now, what caused it? He got busy. The summer before, I had talked to him, been to chelation lately, and no, I'm, Helen, I'm so busy. Go to chelation. You've got to do it. Summer became fall. He's still so busy. He can't get there. Just doesn't have the time. He's so busy. Fall goes into winter, and March, I got the call. And I honestly believe that he would be alive today if he would just have stuck with chelation. He didn't. He let it go for nine months. And in nine months, he was in bad enough shape that he had to have open heart surgery. He lived after that whole open heart surgery for about three and a half years or so. Not quite four years. They were not good years. I'm not going to stand here and tell you what good years they were. They weren't. They were not good years. They were years of in and out of the hospital, drawing fluids off of him and, and horrible things. That, I just, I felt so sorry for him, but I continued to go to chelation. I don't miss chelation. Ask the staff back there. They'll tell you, I go, I go, I do it. I don't stop. I learned one thing from my brother. I have to do this, and I have to do it regularly, and I cannot let it slip and get so busy that I can't get, get it this summer or, or this fall or this winter. I don't go there because I, there are so many things that chelation does in your body for you. The, it, the, the quality of your life is just changed. It, it absolutely, I tell, I've told my husband, one time I told him, I said, there's something you need to learn. When I have been chelated the day before, this day, 
You don't mess with me. I will run you over. I will tear you apart. I am so full of energy. I can't stand it. And if you get in my way, you're going to know it. And he knows, boy, after I've been killed, don't mess with her. Because I, the thing that my brother told me, he said, chelation will do something different for everyone. I don't know what it's going to do in your body. Well, I'll tell you what it does in my body. It gives me energy. I've got energy through the roof. That's what it does for me. And I'm, I'm not kidding. I'm ready to go. I am hitting it hard. The, the day after I have chelated, my feet hit that floor, and the floor knows something has happened. And I am that way until the next month. And then when I, I always make, before I leave the office, I make my, my appointment for the next month. That's the way it works for me. And I cannot recommend it too highly. Please, please, just consider this. If you aren't doing it, I've done 77. Now, this last month was 77. I'm not up to your number, but I'm getting there. And if you're chelating, don't stop because it will, it will change your life. He has also, Dr. T found out I had a thyroid problem. He has taken care of that. That is now under control. He found out that I had an oxygen problem. He's taken care of that. Oxygen has just ch changed my life. I, have, I, I sleep with oxygen at night, and it's wonderful. And the man who gave me the oxygen test told me, if you're over 50, you need oxygen at night. I didn't know that. See the wonderful things you find out when you mess around with Dr. T. <laughs> so I just want you to, those of you who are his patients, you are so blessed. We are so blessed to have this man in our midst and a man who really cares. He cares. And I thank God he does. Thank you. God bless you. Inflammation. You go, well, I know what inflammation is. It's when you get sick and it hurts and it swells and whatever. But this is actually the silent cause of all diseases. Now, how do you reduce your suffering? It's only one way. Reduce your inflammation. So that's what we're going to talk about today. What is it? Where is it? When does it happen? How does it start? Why does it stay? And what can you do to reduce the damage? The first step in healing and repair is inflammation. It is always inflammation. It is never not inflammation. But when it stalls, it burns. Rather than completing the healing process, you end up with a continuing irritation of inflammation. Now, burns on the skin would seem obvious because that's where we see, that's what we feel. And as it goes deeper, it gets more dramatic in terms of preventing effective healing. What about heartburn? We all kind of know about that. We call it GERD and whatever, but everybody's familiar with that kind of inflammation. But even a heart attack is an inflammation problem. And most other illnesses, including allergies, I always love the kids' allergic salute. You can see it every time you walk down the aisles in the grocery store. Headaches are inflammations. All body organs are showing inflammation. And from most causes, whether it's a trauma, an injury, or from chemical exposures, we're dealing whatever it is with inflammation. Now we think of inflammation as fire, and indeed it is, but we rust because of inflammation, which means that normal aging and degeneration of all kinds are inflammation. Would it seem to you it's important to learn about this? Yes. Now, we've heard about free radicals. Free radicals are oxidation change. Of course, you know it takes oxygen to run a fire. So oxidation, inflammation, we're talking the same kind of chemistry here. When we talk about free radicals, I always think about free the Chicago 7, but that dates me. <clears throat> free radicals are simply chemical compounds that have lost a paired electron. Electrons are friends. They like to go together to the bathroom like girls, okay? So electrons like to be in pairs. And if you strip one away, now that other electron is looking to grab one from someone else. And now we have a new free radical, and that one is looking to grab one from someone else. You remember the Walt Disney pictures where they used to throw a table tennis ball into a room 
where they had loaded mouse traps with table tennis balls. One hits another, hits another, hits another, and another, 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 and that's what inflammation looks like. It's inflammation chemistry going out of control. So restoring better health means controlling inflammation for its normal and useful purposes. In other words, healing and repair. And maintaining better health means controlling inflammation for its normal and useful purposes rather than allowing it to cause damage inside you. So what is inflammation? It's the rusting chemistry that wears out and injures every part of your body, no exceptions. So what illness do you have? It doesn't matter, no exceptions. Where is it bothering you? It doesn't matter, no exceptions. Every part of your body, especially your organs, are getting hampered by inflammation. So when you have an impaired organ function, you're told you have a kidney disease, you have a liver disease, you have lung disease, guess what? Inflammation, no exceptions. When? Well, inflammation is literally from the moment you start developing because this is part of the normal healing and development process. But it starts to accelerate as you grow older and becomes part of the degeneration process, and especially as your hormones decrease. Why is inflammation a problem? Because inflammation chemistry is the, the critical step in healing and repair and normal chemical processes, in other words, handling free radicals. It only gets to be a problem when it gets stuck and seems to burn you. How does inflammation work? Well, hand grades are a good example. Just being nearby when inflammation sticks is an easy way for organs to be damaged. That chemistry spreads like, literally, wildfire. So what to do? Well, mobilizing your fire suppression team is essential. So think of diseases, if you will, in the same way as injuries or illnesses that happen to your house. You get termites. You get infestations with various bugs. You get invasions with various bugs. You get plugged pipes. You get moldy airways and moldy air fixtures. You have moldy insulation. Your house can suffer moldy walls and floors and sagging ceilings or roof beams, leaking roof problems and cracking walls or foundations. These events are inside your body as well, the equal of inflammation. Now, is the damage really that serious? Well, my doctor never mentioned anything about inflammation, except maybe for me to take an anti-inflammatory drug like ibuprofen or Vioxx. I have to give you a short story. When we were medical students, they'll do anything for money. Remember that. For 50 bucks, you could take two pills, they'd measure some things about you, and an hour or two, you'd be done. So they were going to test this new drug that was going on to clinical trials, and they just needed a few more studies, and they just needed us to take two tablets, and here's the known list of side effects, not often, but just known list, and they could not persuade any one of the 150 medical students to get the 50 bucks. And so the professor of pharmacy said, remember, we couldn't pay you 50 bucks, so the next time you tell someone, take two aspirin and call me in the morning, remember you didn't like the side effects. That's what an anti-inflammatory can do. Acute inflammation, here's a picture of it. You see all those little dark spots sitting all over the histochemistry there. Those spots are all those inflammatory cells that are in place because injury of any kind in your body leads to inflammation. You get a break in the skin, you start immediately an inflammation process because that is the beginning of the repair. That is what will bring in all of the healing signals in order to have your body repair and replace the tissues that have been injured. It's also how you protect against infection because all those inflammation cells will burn the neighboring infection. So when you hear about stuck inflammation, that means where it didn't go on to finish the healing. That means where it didn't go on to do the repair. It's just stymied. Now it doesn't just sit there idle, it sits there cooking. And guess who it is cooking? 
Here's an example of ineffective repair. You injure the walls, the linings of your arteries, your blood vessels, and your heart, your brain, and so on. As a patch, you put on cholesterol. Why? Because cholesterol is not an effective fire quencher, as effective as vitamin C or vitamin E, but we're all nutritionally deficient. So we don't have enough of the vitamins in the neighborhood to quench the fire. So cholesterol is floating around, it'll do a halfway good job. But cholesterol then builds up in the neighborhood where it's been deposited from quenching the fire. So you have an ineffective repair because you keep forming more and more blockage disease. The dietary cholesterol you take in has nothing to do with this. Your body makes the cholesterol in order to do the repair and protection. This artery wall damage then progresses through a cascade of steps with cells and chemicals inside your body being involved. All of them, everywhere, any part of your body can go on and form this stuck plaque, this inflammation damage. Artery wall inflammation, this is the true cause of blocking arteries, the true cause of heart attacks, strokes, and other organ failures. Now, sticky blood clots form, much because of our nutritional and prescriptions being inadequate to protect us in any way against sticky blood. Now, we do have nutritional things and drug sources. We aim at reducing sticky blood, which reduces inflammation. But you have to know specifically what you're aiming at. And what you're trying to prevent is this chronic inflammation. This is an example that looks a little different than the, the histology, the cell picture you saw with the acute inflammation because there are now what we call mature immune cells and mature inflammation cells in there that are getting thick. You're trying to form scabs on the inside. You haven't been able to control it and heal it, so you're going to wall it off. And chronic inflammation has consequences. Cancer, cardiovascular diseases, Alzheimer's, diabetes, especially type 2, arthritis, autoimmune diseases, including the rheumatoid arthritis, lupus and such, neurological diseases, not just Alzheimer's, but dementia patterns, pulmonary or lung diseases, inflammation leads to these consequences. Organ injuries occur by the whole cascade. It's like a waterfall. You push something over the first edge and it goes down, 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 each triggering the next step in the process. Various chemicals called cytokines effectively share the acute changes in one area and transform them into chronic changes elsewhere. Have you heard this before? No, it's not what doctors are going to talk about because it's not in their world view in taking care of specific organ problems. And yet, Michael Kahn, a dentist, said that if the damaging stimulus cannot be eradicated or neutralized, the balance between tissue damage and tissue repair is maintained in a stalemate, and thus chronic inflammation will persist often for years. Doesn't this sound like the problems we have in our worldview at the moment? We're excellent with trauma, acute injuries. We're excellent with acute infections. It's the chronic disease changes where our medical care system is failing. Despite spending three to five times what any other country spends, we are getting sicker as time goes by. Chronic inflammation persists for years. Remember your lifelines. Life is a fluid thing. It's moving blood around to tissues, moving lymphatic fluid back to the heart, moving foods through the gut and moving air into and out of the lungs. Inflammation damages these organ functions, interrupting your lifelines. Your arteries are targeted. Your immune system vessels and organs are targeted. Your immune defenses are targeted, both antibody systems as well as killer cells P and B, lymphocytes, all the elements of your immune system get damaged. And autoimmune diseases, as you've heard, are among the most destructive. Lupus, or so-called SLE, rheumatoid arthritis, and other serious illnesses are inflammation simply gone wild. 
the bones and joints, muscles and sinews of your body are targets, and anyone with arthritis certainly understands this picture. What about taking naproxen or Aleve? You know, all of the drugs, the marvelous, wonderful drugs we have as anti-inflammatories. Well, in my first year of medical practice, a fellow came in to me in his early 50s. I prescribed him naproxen, a reasonably recent drug. He thought I walked on water. This was wonderful. He was over his pains. He was able to do whatever he wanted. Unfortunately, a few months later, they called me to the intensive care unit during lunchtime. He bled to death in front of me. We could not shove blood into him fast enough because of the bleeding ulcer created by the naproxen drug, and he literally could not get stable to be taken to surgery. Now, profound effect on me. You might imagine that's where I ended up saying I'm going off in a different direction. I'm not going to have this happen anymore. However, they must have made a leave a whole lot safer because it's the exact same drug and they boast about it being safe on TV and I remember I killed somebody simply because he had pains in his joints now joint pains weren't killing him I did with my drug what a thought your structure remember that damage is more than just to bones and to joints it's more than just to muscles and sinews it's more than just to skin and membranes it's to your organs as well or how you work on the inside because chronic inflammation destroys tissues the white blood cells are extremely potent these boys carry big guns and when they come out targeting something it's over that's why you're able to take care of infection from uh, bacteria viruses parasites things like that what happens when those guns get turned on you? I can assure you, all of the chemical mediators, we call them, we have fancy names for everything. All it is is that everything gets pulled into the process and you will not survive the crossfire. The enzymes digest your collagen, your tissue is destroyed. Lungs are especially sensitive. And remember, lungs are these fragile tissues exposed to all of this stuff in the air and the environment around us. Allergies are due to inflammation, and who doesn't know about the sinus congestion, the throat and con chronic Houston cough and cough and Houston crud that we walk around with. Even cancer, virtually all of the cancers shown here are acting through inflammation pathways. Virtually every single cause of cancer, radiation, alcohol, smoking, it doesn't matter. All of these are inflammation processes. Now, nutrient synergy stops cancer cell invasions. Synergy. That means working together. So you don't just take vitamin C or just vitamin A or I just take this because I heard that was great. You take all of the different nutrients because they combine together. It's kind of like a paint by number picture. If you have just three of the colors, I assure you, you're not going to figure out what the painting is. You have to have all of them because they work together. And that's what makes the beauty of human bodies because we use all of these foodstuffs together. Combining the nutrients stops the invasion of various cancer cells. You see on the left-hand side the bar of the 100% of cancers, and then you see these things virtually dropping down to 0% and 0%, 2%, whatever. What we're looking at is how well you can block cancer invasion by having adequate nutrition. Patient reports of cellular medicine success with various types of cancer. Name the cancer. Lung, testicle, prostate, lymphoma, bladder, breast, bone, colon, ovarian cancer, skin, esophagus. It does not matter. Because remember, we're not treating the organ, we're treating the inflammation in the organ leading to the organ problem. When we talk about cell health and cancer, we're talking about decreasing metastatic disease, in other words, the spread of the cancer. We're talking about treating virtually all cancers. We're talking about multiple targets. You go for the starting of the tumor, the spreading of the tumor, the way the tumor damages you, and so on. There are virtually no side effects. Now, at this point, I should tell you, I don't treat cancer. Why? Because I don't know how, I'm not a cancer doctor. I do, however, treat inflammation, and if your body handles that in a good way, 
congratulations. Because you have to remember that this is the fire within. And one day someone could devise a way to halt the chronic destructive inflammation and that would be a great idea. And indeed, we have many ways now to do that. The natural control of inflammation is important to all these diseases, hardening of the arteries, cancer, arthritis, diabetes, ulcers, allergies like hay fever and so on, asthma, neurodegenerative diseases like dementia and Alzheimer's. It's the critical steps in inflammation are where the receptors get turned on. In other words, where you get plugged in to the inflammation pathway. And then when you start triggering the waterfall of all the different chemical reactions that are going to happen because of that. And now many industries depend upon your illness. One of my friends, Maureen Salomon, was president of the National Health Federation when I was chairman of the board. And Maureen said, we have a problem in this country. There are more people making a living off of cancer than dying from it. Hmm. Wonder if we have a similar problem with heart disease. Doctors don't learn about vitamins on a regular heartbeats. Here's Harrison's Principles of Internal Medicine, classic textbook. The treatments are talked about like pacemakers and cauterization for rhythm disturbances. That's also called ablation drugs. Do you know that they don't mention any vitamins? Isn't that interesting? Because the longer you give magnesium and B-complex vitamins, the more you go toward no arrhythmia. The longer you don't give them, the more frequent the arrhythmia or heart rhythm disturbances become. Inflammation causes, do we really know what causes it? Are they really treatable and are they preventable? Wouldn't prevention be far more valuable? How about dietary choices? Chemical preservatives are pretty persuasive because you can't pronounce most of the things that are in your food. You know, if you eat a single source food, you do a whole lot better. If you eat a pickle that was labeled on the jar, pickle, as opposed to pickle plus this, plus that, plus this, plus that, plus this, plus that. If you don't believe it, read the canned foods and the frozen foods, and you'll find all these things that are preservatives, emulsifiers, etc., stabilizers, etc., and you start wondering. Remember air pollution and smog. That's why some people live in Stinkadena and we don't. Smoking, personal air pollution. I mean, I like to take a squirt gun into restaurants and just shoot them out, right? Don't, don't you want to do that? Because they say it's my right to smoke and I go, but it's my right to breathe clean air and you're soiling my air. But it's not just the air. There's all these chemicals that are in here that are inflammation promoters. That's why smoking is so devastating. Don't you want to shake hands with a person whose hands look like this under the bacteria detecting microscope uh, lights there, UV lights? Bacterial and viral infections are spread very easily from person to person and from object to person. So, just as a point, do you remember when flying was dangerous and sex was safe? Oh well. Molds and fungus, they're all around us and especially in humid environments like hot humid Houston. Pesticides, we use a billion pounds yearly. You don't have to count on them to go ahead and do aerial spraying. You'll do it yourself in your own backyard. Parasites, one of my friends wrote a, a book, Guess Who's Coming to Dinner? Well, the whole point is, is remember, you don't have parasites, but you go out to restaurants. Alcohol, yes, they do make pictures like this. You gotta wonder. But we do start early in this country. It is amazing to me the number of alcoholics in elementary and junior high school now. It's a tragedy of our era. And don't forget recreational drugs. They are definitely out there. Food adulteration is a major issue. Is it really worth a longer shelf life? Some labels carry more ingredients that are chemicals producing increased stress inside your body, inflammation stress, than the ones that are helpful for human body function. Here's a good example of a wonderful meal. Don't forget, you can even buy diet water. And I go, what do that mean? Because I thought water was pretty acaloric to begin with. And the air we breathe. I don't know about you, but my phone has been pushing air quality alerts for the last three weeks. Medicines and drugs. Unfortunately, we have a whole industry where 
you know, the pharmacy is just the attractant to get you in to spend your $200 there and then your $50 on the way out buying something else in the store. Why did I put the shrimp up for other exposures? How many of us believe that the Gulf has just been killed? It is a sad fact, but I do believe true, that if oil itself is not dangerous, then all of the chemicals that we have put out there certainly are. And unfortunately, those vessels of opportunity were sailed by our friends and our family members who actually made a living getting Gulf Coast seafood for us to enjoy. And those folks on those vessels of opportunity are just like the first responders for 9-11. I fear for their well-being, and I fear for ours if we take the seafood in. Dental infections, root canals, these have phenomenal stress and inflammation cause in our systems. The root canals are filled with materials that provoke inflammation, although they do kill the nerves. And surprise, here's an inflammation source, exercise. Whether you're spinning or jogging or whatever, any extreme effort, especially with sports, can cause more inflammation. Even digestion causes inflammation because you're using heavy-duty acids and heavy-duty bases, acids and alkalis in order to digest your food. You need to control these so that you don't digest or harm yourself. Weight loss even causes inflammation. The release of the fats and all of the free radicals that are associated with that promote inflammation. How about join the Navy now? Tattoos, a wonderful source of continuing inflammation and toxicity. Dr. Trowbridge has really helped me. And uh, first started out about 12 years ago, the day after Easter, after performing two services at a Sec Baptist Church and Church Orchestra, Bear in mind, the, art, the musicians in the church orchestra, we get at church at 7.30 on Sunday morning, and we're on stage at, at 8 o'clock for the, an hour-long rehearsal, and then we play a, about a 45-minute uh, service, then we have about a 30-minute break, and then we got to do the thing all over again. And uh, Sunday mornings, it just, it, to me, for, for 15 years, it's been like a, a regular work day, in addition to you know, my wife and I running a florist for you know, six days a week, sometimes seven days, depending on if we get work on Sunday. Sunday, I mean, I've been blowing and going for seven days a week, virtually all, in my entire working life. And believe it or not, you know, like everybody else, I got myself in a jam. I woke up on a Monday morning after Easter Sunday with a major heart attack. And uh, it just out of the clear blue. I had no symptoms or nothing. It was just boom, I woke up, it felt like a hand had done reached up in my chest cavity and was squeezing my heart. And I said, oh my goodness, what in the world is this? And I just laid back down on my pillow and I said, oh Lord, I said, please don't let this be a heart attack. Well, sure enough, it was. And uh, for a solid year and a half, I went to emergency room nine different times. And out of those nine different times, I almost flatlined three of those nine times. My blood pressure would go from like 227 over 140 down to like 20 over 10. They were having to bring me back to life. And I'll tell you right now, folks, that was not fun. That went on for a year and a half. And finally, one day, after the ninth trip to the emergency room, I told my wife, I reasoned out, just reason. Think about it logically. Clogged arteries is like clogged pipes in your plumbing. I can't drink Drano to clean out my pipes. So what do I do? And I remembered there was an... Uh, I had a company in Houston, North Houston, for about 11 years. The man that did my, my CPA uh, was a uh, herbal physician in Arkansas. He had an herbal farm. I say farm. He had an herbal rehabilitation center where medical doctors in Arkansas were through with patients that they, they, could, they could no longer help. They'd send him to Bill Busby. But Bill Busby worked himself into the ground almost himself. He worked 17 years in that herbal re rehabilitation center. The man was a Cherokee Indian medicine man. And my trip back from the emergency room that ninth time, I happened to run into him by accident sitting in a cafe. Bill was my CPA, and uh, he had moved on out of the Houston area, so I had to get somebody else. And I hadn't seen him in probably, I don't know, seven or eight years. The Lord put me and this guy together. You've got to understand, 
Sometimes the Lord works in steps. I was hard-headed. I was narrow-minded. I would not listen to anybody else except a medical doctor. Well, folks, I gave them a year and a half and nine trips to the emergency room, and they hadn't put me on a program that worked yet. The Lord put me with Bill Busby. He said, well, let me work up some of the Indian uh, uh, herbals and see if we can stop this six-week cycle back into the emergency room in the middle of the night with blood pressure running 220 over 140 plus. Well, believe it or not, his concoction worked. It broke that six-week cycle. I went eight weeks without having to go to the hospital. I said, well, you know, there's something to this uh, alternative stuff. So I was driving down uh, the old 1960, was passing by the thrifty pharmacy, and Don Apple had a vinyl sign out front that said, cholesterol testing today. And I said in my mind, I saw that sign, I said, well, this must be one of these mobile clinics that go around temporarily checking on people. Well, I guess that was some good advertisement or, or a good marketing strategy that uh, uh, Don Apple had because it got me in his door. And he said, well, go back home and fast for 13 hours and we'll check your cholesterol. I had never even thought about a compounding pharmacy, how good that could actually benefit, you know, patients. You know, you didn't go into Walgreens, you know, they give you, the, they give you their prescribed stuff and you're out the door. Well, Mr. Apple had a place over there where, golly, he took your blood. And he tested it for triglycerides and HDLs and all this kind of uh, stuff that goes on inside your body. And uh, he said, well, you're on the verge of another heart attack. Well I, well, I know that. I've been going in the hospital for a year and a half, nine times. How much evidence do I need? He says, well... Well, right off the bat, he put me on Methyl Guard and uh, NiSafe 600, and he got the triglycerides virtually eliminated. He said, I'm now going to send you over to an alternative drugs doctor named Dr. John Parks Trowbridge, right over here at the Northeast Medical Center. I looked at him, and I said, what do you mean alternative doctor? I didn't know somebody like that even existed. Now, you, you, I mean, you don't see these medical, medical doctors telling you about alternative uh, ways to get yourself uh, cured. So Mr. Apple sent me over to this man right here. And I can promise you folks, Dr. Trowbridge saved my life. Mr. Apple saved my life. They right off the bat put me on chelation therapy. And of course, running all the tests, found out I was loaded with lead and mercury. Now as we sit right here today, folks, we're sitting right on top of the old Humble oil field. Humble in the Houston area is full of toxic metals, toxic everything. Uh, we have pictures in our family uh, albums at home showing this, this land right here we're on. It used to be done at oil wells and oil tanks. Uh, there's one right down the road here about a mile and a half. Uh, the Carriage Mobile Home, is a mobile home village. They finally had to close it down because of the toxicity that they kept finding in the water. They spent over $500,000 trying to fill in an old tank where they used to put all their sludge in. Well, they messed up the formation. And, hey, Humble in Houston area, I mean, we're full of toxic uh, everything. Dr. Trowbridge found out that I was loaded with, lead, loaded with lead and mercury. I grew up right here in Humble. And the chelation therapy got me out of all that. It flushed my blood out and cleaned me up. What can I say? I mean, the man has got the program, he's got it down, he's got it down pat. 